much. All right. Uh, <laughs> thank you, President Fellman and Provost Clark. It is certainly an honor for me to receive the Rochester Distinguished Scholar Award and to have the privilege to speak at this year's doctoral commencement ceremony. Because on October 2nd, 2018, I became one of the most famous graduate students ever. <laughs> and the one who got to show the world that great things are achieved by graduate students here at the University of Rochester. I remember sitting at my PhD graduation, although that was out in the field, uh, thinking I deserve to be congratulated because I worked so hard for this. I hope that each of you today is also bursting with that same pride. Now maybe some of you are thinking, I don't have a highly cited paper, but at your stage, I haven't either. In fact, my Nobel winning paper was hardly cited at all for the first five years. But my supervisor, Gerard Maru, and I still knew that it was a significant contribution to high intensity laser physics. You know how hard you work to be here today and what you have accomplished. Every one of you graduating today has furthered the world's knowledge, and so we are all here, your family, friends, professors, and colleagues, to congratulate you and thank you for those contributions. So, now that you have accomplished the work needed for a graduate degree, what's next? I knew I wanted a PhD since I was in elementary school. I have no plans for anything past that. In my third year of my PhD, I heard about the work of Canada's leading ultra-fast scientist, Paul Corkin. I instantly knew that I wanted to be his next postdoctoral fellow at the National Research Council. It is the only time in my life that I had a very clear plan of what I was going to do next. Now, I do not recommend having such a specific career goal, because as you all know, you are highly educated in some field that probably has very few jobs that require those exact skills. <laughs> Between my third and seventh year of grad school, I developed CPA, and so I did get to be Paul's second ever postdoc. I worked hard, but I also think I was born under a lucky star. By the end of grad school, I had started dating one of the guys in the same group, he's here, but told him that I would never marry an American because I was moving home to Canada and nothing was going to stop me. Doug, that guy, who I did end up marrying, likes to keep reminding me of all the things I said I would never do, but ended up doing. When I moved to Ottawa for my three-year postdoc position, Doug had gotten the ideal job for an ultra-fast laser person, a permanent job at Bell Labs. We decided to get married when I finished my postdoc. Since he had the permanent job, I started looking for a job in New Jersey. How hard could it be? After all, I had wanted the one and only job with Canada's leading ultra-fast person and got it. Surely, I could find a laser job in all of New Jersey. Not so much. A colleague from Lawrence Livermore National Lab in California told me that if I couldn't find a job in New Jersey, he had one for me at Livermore. I said I would never take a job in California and at a U.S. national lab where Canadians can't get the necessary security clearances to enter most of the buildings, including the laser building at Livermore. With three months left to find a job, I had an invited talk at the main laser conference, and I decided that I would have to give the talk of my life so that someone in the room would want to hire me. I did, and wouldn't you know? The one person in that room who wanted to hire me was from Livermore. <laughs> there goes another number. After our honeymoon, my new husband returned to New Jersey, and I moved myself to California. Many couples try living together before marriage. Doug and I tried marriage before living together. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest thing about being highly educated is that you have to be flexible and be open to compromises. It is hard to find an ideal job where you would ideally want to live. You have to decide what is most important to you at that time. Doug and I kept looking for jobs where we could be together. It was really getting old living on opposite sides of the continent. After a year, I gave up on the dream of getting a faculty position, 
and accepted a job as a member of technical staff at Princeton. We wanted to start a family, and it turned out this was the ideal job for me while I was pregnant. I was nauseous 24 hours a day through the entire pregnancy both times. I couldn't have been a professor lecturing for an hour in front of students. So in the end, it turned out to be a great job for that stage of life. Then the University of Waterloo took a chance and hired me, even though it had been four years since I had worked as a scientist. This time my husband followed me to Waterloo and took a job with industry. I finally had it all. A wonderful husband, two kids. I had my faculty job and I was living in Canada near my family. I think I have been incredibly lucky. You are all lucky too. You are all very intelligent and highly educated here at the University of Rochester. It is up to you what you do with that luck. You have to know inside you what you really want and then go for it. If you're doing what you really want, you'll have fun and the tenacity to stick with it, even during the frustrating times, and there will be frustrating times. And most importantly, never say never. Make the most of every opportunity that comes your way. You really never know what will happen next. Thank you.